David Wasson with CAPS, manufacturer of the Hurt Rentals 120-ton high-static chilled water air handling unit. This unit is capable of 15,000 CFM at 5 inches of total static pressure. This video is going to go through the setup, startup, and operation of this machine. The first step in the installation of the 120-ton air handling unit is to determine how it's going to be transported. We give you two options for that. The first is integrated forklift pockets here at the base of the skid, which will be used in forklift. The other second thing is this has a certified lifting stacking cage. It's got four-point lift uh, lift uh, island on each corner. It can be lifted with a crane uh, to a single point lift. Please note utilizing it as our forklift crane. Note the weight tag here at the bottom. The unit weighs 5,600 pounds. We need to make sure the forklift or the crane operator is aware of that before trying to move it. Always set the unit on a plumb level stable ground. And the center of gravity is clearly marked on each side of the machine for safety. The 120 ton air handling unit requires a minimum circuit ampacity of 35 amps and a maximum overcurrent protection of 60 amps. That's clearly marked here on the CAPS data tag. Please keep in mind that all of the CAPS manufacturing equipment does include an integrated circuit breaker to protect everything downstream of the electrical panel. The only thing you'll have to protect is the cable coming that's going to feed the machine. Additionally, when we're looking at the side, you'll note that we have hydronic connections here and here. This will be where our chill water hoses will be connecting. And we also have a condensate drain on two sides, this side as well as the other side. You only actually need to use one, but both can be used for condensate drain. Our next step is to hook up the main high voltage power. It's 460 volt, three phase, 60 hertz. First, going to remove the weather and dust caps off the female cam lock connections here at the bottom of the control panel. This is L1, 2, and 3 in ground. With our cable, you always connect the ground lead first. That's for safety. We're going to lock that in. And I'm, going to, I'm going to just go down the line and put in L1, 2, and 3 into the circuit. You want to make sure that these are clean and dry. And if they do make up tight, if you're going through this, make sure you're also wearing the proper PPE equipment while handling the cable with your gloves, your hot gloves, and your leather gloves. Now that we have all the cables, ran and connected. We're going to unlock our main power source and energize the cable and we're going to verify if we have the correct rotation. Okay, we've removed our lockout tag out from our primary voltage source and so now our cable is energized. We're going to energize, close the main circuit breaker of the unit. Notice that we get a power light here but we also get a phase incorrect light here. That indicates that two of our phases is out which the machine will lock out on the phase monitor and will not operate. We'll have to lock and tag out our phase source, kill the power, and reverse two of, two of these cables here. Please note, you never change the cam locks cables coming in anytime the cable's energized. Power back to our cable. We've changed the L1 and L2 leads coming in. So now we're going to close our main circuit breaker. Notice the power light come on, and now the phase incorrect light is off. That means our unit's properly phased and ready to operate. At this point, we're going to turn the power off and finish our setup before we re-energize the machine. The next part of our setup is addressing our condensate trap. Because this unit is a high static air handling unit, producing a tremendous amount of high and low pressure across the fan, we first got to prime these traps in order to to verify that the, the condensate that's going to be made off the cooling coil comes out. So you use a water hose or just a bottle of water. You simply want to put it in a trap here and fill this trap up. Please note that on the 200, on the 120 ton air handler, there's two traps, one on this side and one on the other side. So make sure you prime both of them before we put the machine in operation. If you don't get these traps primed, then the water will back up in the system and potentially over. Okay, our next step is going to be to hook up this 4-inch chill water line. The male is the supply, and on the chill water coils, the bottom is always going to be the supply. It has a female cam lock on it. 4-inch simply goes in, break over the, the locks on the bottom, the gaskets inside, make sure the hose is not in a bind or has any undue pressure on it. Then I'm going to take a, a female 
that's going to be leaving the coil. The female hose is simply go up there on top, lock those in. Well, there we go. Now both my both my uh, butterfly valves are open. I've got a vent valve here at the top. I'm going to leave it open, and we're going to start filling and pressurizing the system. The water is going to enter the bottom, fill the coil up, and push the air out the top vent here. Can't have any air in the system, otherwise you won't have any cooling. So we'll start filling now. Okay, now we've got our system completely pressurized. We're at about 50 psi. We went through a series of bleeding air off. Currently have about 50 psi in the lines, both of them. I'm going to take this little top air vent here at the top. I'm going to open it up. You're going to hear that there's air there. You want to keep doing that, keep bleeding the, bleeding the air off until there's nothing but water. Remember, if there's not any water in the coil, you can't have cooling. So we've got to get all the air out of the system uh, before we put it into operation. While I'm here, I want to mention that this door here is our filter access doors. This is where the air filters are changed. And then this panel here, take the four bolts out there, there's a low water drain at the bottom. That's the lowest point in the system for winterization or when you get all the water out of, out of the system, you take the door off, that's your lowest point of drain for the system. Now we've got our hydronic side ready. We've got our condensate uh, line primed. Next part we'll move on to the ductwork. Next step is going to be to hook up our supply air ductwork. This air handler is designed for 100% outside air, but we do have the choice of running return air. This particular application example, we're going to assume it's 100% outside air, which means no ductwork on the inlet, and we're going to show you how to duct two of the supply ducts. You're going to do pull the, uh, the pull pin, open the quadrant damper, put the pin back in to lock the quadrant down. Each one of the outlets has a quadrant damper because each, each outlet may have a longer piece of duct and you may, this is where you're going to do your, your air balancing. You're going to take your duct work and it does have an airflow direction on it. You want to make sure that your duct work is going in the direction of flow. And in order to install it, you're simply going to hook it up to the bottom of the ring on these and you're going to drop down the friction clamps all four corners, which will lock the duct work in. And we're going to do two of them here again, right direction airflow. Come in, the, I always put the, uh, the duct work in the bottom first. Here, make it up. Open up your friction clamps, lock down all four of them. Right there. And then when we pressurize and turn the air handler on, we can always come back and adjust the balancing damper here to divert airflow left or right or to a longer run. The 120 ton air handling unit's got six 20 inch inlets. As you've seen in the previous, uh, we hooked the duck up as four outlets. One thing you need to note is, is that regardless whether you're using a ducted configuration or 100% outside air, all of the intakes need to be left open. And these two have you know, balancing dampers on them as well for you to do air balancing. But you need to open up all the dampers, secure them with the pins. So we're running in 100% outside air. We got free free flow in the machine through the air filters and through the coil. We don't want to leave any of these closed off so that we have a dead section of, of the coil. The supply side, we've got some uh, options there, whether we run four ducts, three ducts. We have enough static pressure even to operate it with two ducts. So this is just a standard type application. Ducted is an option. Design is 100% outside air. Okay, to recap, the installation of the 120-ton chill water air handler, we first started out with loading the machine in place with a fork lift, noting the weight of it and noting the different lifting op options and securing it on stable level ground. Second, we, we identified the required power that's going to be needed, 460 volt three phase, sized our circuit for that, ran the wire to it, we hooked up our main high voltage power to it. Then we went to the hydronic side and hooked up our, our four inch line in and our four inch line out. We've bled all the air out of the system. We've primed our condensate traps there so we're, we've are we got a good prime on those so they'll drain properly. Then we've ducted our, our supply duct into the building that we're going to be conditioning. This particular application example, we're using 100% outside air. So we've got all of our dampers open. At this point, we're ready to start the machine up. Okay, now we've got everything done. We've went through our checklist. We don't need our hot gloves anymore. Uh, the rest of the setup and controls is I've turned the main circuit breaker on. 
I've, I have an, op an option here of uh, a selector switch from off, which is center, does nothing on the machine, or VFD mode, which is variable frequency drive, which is equipped on the Perk 120 ton uh, chilled water air handler, or I have a bypass, which bypasses the drive if you just want a 100% air with no adjustment. We selected VFD, and then we have a, a, a potentiometer here that's got a minimum and a maximum uh, mark on the tag here. It's all the way counterclockwise to the left is minimum airflow. In this case, it's zero. The fan's not turning. And then you turn, as you turn it to the right, the fan starts slowly speeding up. And the purpose of this, and we've got our power light on, our VFD lights on. Now when you start, you can start here in the air move. This is for setting the amount of CFM or static on a project. Also, it allows us to vary the airflow so that we get the proper delta T we want. If we want a larger delta T, we slow the air down. If we want less, we speed it up. But as you can see, I can go all the way to max, which will give us our full 15,000 capable five inches of total static pressure. So that balancing occurs by setting the chiller temperature or temperature control and then setting the airflow for the requirements of the job, whether it be the stationary or lay flat duct. And that's that's as simple as how, how you operate control the unit. You can simply turn it down and up right off of the stop. And at any time, you can always flip it into bypass mode, which takes it to 100% uh, CFM.